Good morning and welcome to St. John's. We're so glad and excited that you have tuned in to our morning worship experience online. Uh, we welcome you, whether you're a member of St. John's here in Wilmington or whether you're tuning in from afar. We're so glad that you're with us. Maybe give us a shout out and comment online. If you've got a prayer request this morning, we'd love for you to maybe put those into the comment section as well. We've got people who are looking at that and who are lifting folks up as they're uh, sharing their prayer needs this morning. We believe we serve a God who's alive and well. He's resurrection in his life. He's worthy of our praise and our worship today. All of the prayers and responses you'll find uh, hopefully on your screen this morning. So we hope that worship is accessible for you and that you can enter in and really be blessed and focus on the Lord. So we encourage you, gather up your family, round your kids up. Uh, the way you do this is to just let it all out. As we're singing this morning, we encourage you to sing from your homes. Uh, let your neighbors hear the noise as you're worshiping the Lord today. Um, and we'll be blessed by His Spirit. Thanks again for connecting with us. Uh, let's get ready to worship everybody. Can somebody clap in the middle? Just do a clap.
Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle 
of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. They were, there were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded, and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to bone, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
reading from the Gospel of John. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. And after saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. 
The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it's been quite a week, uh, quite a week for the whole world, quite a week for our nation, and quite a week for our own community here in Wilmington, North Carolina. I think uh, a big round of applause should probably go out to all the parents who are trying to keep their children preoccupied and uh, uh, safe and alive. Um, I was talking to someone the other day who uh, was literally concerned about the mental welfare of moms and dads out there. So if you're a, if you're a parent out there today and you're uh, struggling with um, keeping your child safe and well and, and um, pre <laughs> preoccupied, um, we, we feel your pain. It, it, it is a pain. And, and this person was suggesting that uh, mental health uh, could, could be in question for parents out there. So if you're, if you're a parent out there, you may, you may be shouting amen from your couch. It has been quite um, a week and quite, um, quite a time uh, for everyone out there. Uh, we've been a, in a sermon series called The History of Grace at St. John's, and we've been talking about the story of redemption from creation all the way to recreation when God makes once and for all all things new, which is the hope of our Christian faith, which is the reason that Jesus came to make all things new. Today we get a beautiful uh, picture of Ezekiel's prophetic vision of the valley of the dry bones and what a, what a marvelous picture uh, as the Lord commands his prophet to prophesy to the dry bones. He says to him at the beginning of that passage, can these bones live? The prophet's response is, only you know, Lord, seems to be the story of the history of grace is the story of how God comes and makes dead things come alive. How God comes to take things that are broken and to fix them, to take things that are sick and make them well, to take things that are blind and cause them to have their sight again. We read a passage a couple weeks ago about Abram, who uh, his name was changed to Abraham, of course. He was the father of a great nation. He was given a huge promise, and uh, the blessing of God's righteousness was reckoned to Abraham, not because of his perfect obedience, but because he believed God's promise. He reckoned that God was a God who could literally raise someone from the dead. We know this because he was willing to walk in obedience 
to offer his son Isaac as a sacrifice. We know that he finally learned that even though his wife Sarah had a barren womb, that God's promise was something that he could actually cling to and God could cause a child to grow inside that womb that he presumed was closed and dead. He learned that God was a God of resurrection. And that's really the story of the Christian faith is a God who raises the dead, a God who is resurrection and life. I think it's so appropriate that our gospel reading for this Sunday comes from John chapter 11 in this incredible story of Lazarus. It contains what many will cite as the shortest verse in the Bible. And Jesus wept. Not only is our God a God who can raise things from the dead, not only is our God a God who can make all things new, he is resurrection and life, but he is the one who's come to us in human flesh. He's the one who can relate to us on a human level. Jesus has come not only to die for our sins and to rise in the spirit by the power of God, but Jesus has also come to weep. The God we worship in our Christian faith is a God who weeps over our pain, is a God who weeps over our brokenness, is a God who's entered into the realm of the human fray to experience what it's like to be in that human predicament that we find ourselves in. You may find yourself in that place where you feel like everything's becoming entombed like Lazarus was entombed. So many things sort of dropping off and dying out, it seems like. Schools closed, businesses closing, restaurants closing, people getting sick, and it just seems like an overwhelming avalanche of one thing after the next in terms of sort of the impact that we feel uh, from this COVID-19 pandemic. I think God would want us to be encouraged today that not only is he the God of resurrection, but he's the God who comes and he weeps. It's one thing when the pain of a broken economy or sickness and disease touches someone else, but when it touches someone you know, it starts to become real. It's one thing when you hear the reports of toilet paper uh, being not available, not readily, readily available. It's another thing when your cabinet is empty and there's no toilet paper in there, right? You start to feel it on a personal level. I think this is what Jesus experiences. He, he, he heals and he cures and he casts out demons from people. But Mary and Lazarus and Martha, those were his friends. He was really close to them. Jesus comes into the scene. He finally arrives after having waited two days. He speaks to his disciples about how they're going to see the glory of God and the power of resurrection through his ministry. But when he gets to Martha and Mary and they come to him and they're in their despair and they're in their brokenness and they're in their frustration and they're in their confusion over the death of their brother, Mary exclaims to Jesus, oh, if you had been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died. And Jesus is just overcome. He's, he's, he's overwhelmed in the moment because he's friends with these people. He knows them. He's close with them. And he weeps. I don't know what you're going through in your situation and your family out there as you're watching this this morning. I don't know what kind of pain and frustration you feel and just how the how long that that emanates from your heart to the Lord and your honesty before God oh God where are you but I want to encourage you this morning that we worship a, a Lord who is not only majestic and transcendent in power he's holy 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 he's worthy of our praise but he's come to us and he's wept with us he feels your very pain and your frustration, even today, even the, even the smallest of frustrations, he can relate to you, he can relate to us. Jesus Christ wept. The God who raises the dead is the God who weeps 
over the pain and loss, brokenness, fear, and frustration. It's what Jesus has come to fix. It's what Jesus has come to fix in you, that which is broken inside your own heart, your own darkness, your own fractured soul, your own sin-sick heart. Jesus has come to speak life and resurrection and to fix it. What Paul says in the book of Romans chapter 8, this, these verses just ring out from our lectionary, our grouping of readings that um, are assigned for this Sunday. He says this, but if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life, uh, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Admittedly, we're in a, in a moment where it feels like Jesus is two days late in coming. I've already been laid off. My business has had to shut down. I've already had to pick up the phone, Jesus, and tell people that I just can't keep them employed any longer. We've already seen people perish from the sickbed, from this virus. But the Lord of resurrection, I believe, would have us to know that with Christ, it's never too late. And with Jesus, it's never too late because he raises things from the dead. He brings new life. Everything that you feel perhaps today that is entombed, even, even if your entombment is school is out and how can I survive with my children and keep my sanity, even if that's the level of your frustration, Jesus knows. He's with you. He loves you. He weeps with you. He feels your frustration. He understands. He's the great high priest, the Bible says, who can sympathize with every one of our weaknesses. He's given you resurrection life today. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in those who put their trust in him. I encourage you today to be refreshed in the knowledge that resurrection power lives in you. Whatever's in the tomb, whatever that may be for you, whatever you feel like is just dead and in the tomb and it's starting to stink because it's been four days or more, Jesus will raise it up out of that place of deadness. He'll bring life. He'll bring hope. Even in the chaos and the confusion and just the trouble time that we're in, even in this moment, he says, the spirit of life in Christ Jesus dwells in you. The same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. It's resurrection power. It's resurrection power to be the parent he's called you to be. It's resurrection power to believe that God's got a job for you when this is all through. It's resurrection power to believe that all is not lost, that a new day is coming, that weeping may indeed last for the night, but joy will come in the morning. Let the resurrection, life-giving spirit of Jesus who dwells in you Build you up in your faith today. Cling to hope in Christ. His specialty is making all things new. His specialty is bringing things to life again. We believe that today. If you've never called on Jesus to be your Savior, He came for you. He wept for you. He weeps for you. He loves you. He holds out a righteous, mighty arm that's definitely big enough to save you. You say, who, me? Could God save someone like me? Could Jesus literally forgive someone like me and give me new life, give me resurrection life? The answer to that is unequivocally yes. The Bible says, call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. I encourage you that if you've never invited Jesus into your life to call on his name today. He loves you. He sees your situation he knows the brokenness of your own heart, your own circumstances. He can give you new life, resurrection life, hope eternal. Not just for the circumstances 
around the things that we struggle with here and now, but life forever, resurrection life for eternity. God bless you. Call on his name in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated on the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Good to be with you this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in to our online worship experience at St. John's. We encourage you to follow us on social media. You'll find us at SJCILM. We'd love to connect with you. Leave a comment from our service this morning. If you've got a prayer request, we'd love to be praying for you and your family by name. We look forward to being back with you again next week. So uh, same time, same place. Uh, again, we're so honored that we could have spent this uh, few moments with you in your home, with your family in worship this morning. Have a great week. Hang in there. Um, Jesus is resurrection and he is life. He loves you. He's with you. Seek his heart. Have a great week. Take care. <laughs>